Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now to talk about the results from the Scottish referendum is Gary Clark. He's the Head of Policy Research at Scottish Chambers of Commerce. So hi, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Hope you got some sleep. <laughs> a little bit, yes, <laughs> but it has been a long day. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say now that we've had a few hours to digest, what has been the immediate reaction from um, your group? Well, firstly, I think it's important that we have some additional clarity uh, as a result of the referendum result. Uh, the three key issues for business going into the referendum were uh, the currency, were taxation and Europe. Uh, and clearly the currency issue has now been resolved, I think. Uh, but we still have a number of questions about taxation, what will further devolved powers look like? Uh, and of course, we've got that uh, potential European uh, uh, referendum in a couple of years' time. So um, a lot to play for still. Yeah, absolutely. We're not out of the woods yet, in a sense. I mean, the, the margin is actually quite slim. It's about half the pop, nearly half the population still want independence. So what can we expect in terms over the next few months um, regarding the devolved government power issue? Well, I think, first of all, I think it's important to, to say that uh, the referendum is over. It's decided our course of action. Uh, but, you know, we have to uh, go forward as one within Scotland. We can't afford to have winners and losers and 45% of our, our country being losers. We can't afford that. We're a small nation. We need to pull together and get on with the, the, the job of building Scotland. In terms of uh, the future and the potential for devolved powers, uh, all of the, the, the pro-union parties have put forward a platform uh, of potential devolved powers, largely focused around uh, income tax uh, for potential devolution towards Scotland. Um, and of course, I think the SNP would have to be part of that debate going forward. But also the Westminster par parties have put forward a, a, an agenda and a timetable that we expect them to, to deliver to. Uh, so we're hoping for uh, a very quick uh, agreement in terms of what future powers will be devolved when they will, will arrive uh, and let's get on and actually do this. And what would you say would be the greatest concerns or opportunity at, in this um, supposed, I suppose, interim period? Well, I think the important thing is to get clarity on the issues we've been talking about. So taxation would be an obvious one. If the Scottish Parliament is to get additional powers, then those would be tax-raising powers in order to allow that Parliament greater uh, control over the revenue it raises as well as the money it spends. Uh, creating that, that, that better balance in that respect. Um, that's important, we're now moving down that path. Let's get agreement on some of the issues, but let's get agreement on the right taxes. I mean, for example, a lot of them has been made of income tax. That's a hugely important tax economically. But also smaller taxes like air passenger duty could be hugely beneficial for Scotland's airports trying to attract new direct flights into Scotland. Sure. And I mean, over the last uh, couple of years during the referendum process, um, there have been reports from private wealth managers and investment banks saying there's been a bit of a capital flight because people didn't have that clarity before. Do you see actually a surge in maybe business sentiment and um, trading activity even during this interim period of when the devolved uh, government powers are being announced and negotiated? Well, I think the background to this is very important. Um, Scotland's economic growth in the first quarter of this year was 1%. It was slightly above the UK rate of growth. In terms of inward investment in, into Scotland, uh, for three years out of the past four, uh, that has been the second highest in the UK after London. So there is already investment going on in Scotland. There is strong business growth in Scotland. We want that to continue and hopefully the additional clarity over, uh, for example, currency uh, will deliver some of that clarity and encourage even more success and in business investment within Scotland. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. And that was Gary Clark, Head of Policy Research at Scottish Chambers of Commerce.